This is my cheap Chinese USDR transceiver. And this is FD8. Is there a way to get these two to play well together? Well, we'll dive into that today. I'm Morten, LB0 Fox India, and you're watching LB0 Fox India Norwegian Ham Ventures. And to start everything off, I've moved on to the workbench here to take a look at the inputs and outputs of this transceiver. And as you can see here on the side, there are a couple of mini jack, 3.5 millimeter mini jack connectors here. There's one for key, that's for CW key, so that's not gonna be needed now. Uh, there's a trigger to key an amplifier. There's a mic input, a serial port, and a speaker port. So in order to get sound in and out of this, we need to connect audio from the computer into the mic port and to the computer from the speaker port. And my initial thought was that this was as easy as just connecting two simple TRS 3.5 millimeter mini jack connectors. It wasn't, so let's take a look at the dodgy cable I made for it and why I had to make it this way. But first of all, let's take a look at this drawing that I got from the ham that I bought the radio from. As you can see, it's not a tip ring sleeve connector, but it's a tip ring ring sleeve connector, a TRRS connector. And it's wired a little bit different than other connectors are. As you can see, the tip is the mic input, and the ground is not the sleeve, but it's the first ring. So that's my first issue here. But I made this rather dodgy cable. But first, let's take a look at the different connectors here. As you can see, this is the cable going into the radio to the mic port. It says tip, ring, ring, sleeve. And remember, the tip is the uh, mic input, and the first ring is the, uh, is the ground. So we need to connect this to the other cable here. We're gonna use the left audio out, so that is the tip for audio and the sleeve for ground. And this would have been much easier if I had the right connectors lying around. I could just make a two-pole cable myself, but I didn't. So instead, I took two cables I had, and I've rather dodgily soldered them together here uh, at this point here. Uh, this is not a permanent solution, but this is a proof of concept. The moment my wife is done shopping today, I hopefully have a uh, TRS and a TRRS plug and some cables to tie it all together and make a nice cable. This is a proof of concept to show it to work. As regarding audio out of the radio, that is luckily enough just a tip ring sleeve to tip ring sleeve connector going from the speaker output of the radio and into the mic input of the sound card. So uh, that's the audio side of things. And then you might ask, what about stuff like cat control and PTT control. Well, we're gonna do it simple now. I have a board on order from AliExpress, which is a FTDI USB board with some DuPont connectors on it, just to make a simple cable once I get that going. But I have a feeling that the COM port connector on the radio is, is not straightforward either, so that will take some experimentation. But for now, we're just gonna use Vox to PTT the radio. So um, let's get it all hooked up and see if we can get it to work. And in order to get it in and out to the computer, we're just gonna use a cheap USB sound card here. This is one I had lying around, but any cheap USB sound card will work for it. So um, let's go ahead, uh, hook it up to a computer and do the correct settings on both ends to make this. First of all, let's do the radio side of things here before we set up the computer. Okay, I've dimmed the light down here so it's easier for you to see. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, do some uh, some settings here. First of all, we're gonna go into the menu and go over here to, let's just flip through it. Uh, first of all, the noise gate here, I've set that to about 12. Uh, that seems to be the right setting to have the uh, PTT trigger by Vox uh, when you send audio into it. Secondly, we're going to turn Vox on, as, and as you can see, it is on here. So we're good to go on that part. Those are the two settings you need to do on the radio itself. So let's uh, hop over to the computer side of things. 
And on the computer side of things here, we're going to start up WSJT. And get that started here. And it gives you an error because there is no rig control. So uh, we're going to reconfigure the radio interface here. First of all, as radio, we're going to choose none. And we're going to have it PTT by Vox. And you see stuff is starting to happen here. So something's working. Secondly, on the audio tab, we're just going to check that it is the right sound card selected here. And um, yes, it is. So we're going to press OK. That is, those are all the settings you need to do here. And you should start to see the waterfall change here. So there is another thing, though. If we look right over here at the audio levels, you need to change those by uh, by adjusting the volume on the radio. As you can see now, we have a pretty good level. If this is too high or too low, you need to change the settings. And we're going to do one more thing on the radio before we get started here, Joe. We're just going to check the, uh, the auto gain control, the AGC, and see how that is. So let's uh, move over to the radio and see. So we're back at the radio now. And let's press the menu button and find the AGC setting. And um, I never remember where these things are, so I'm just going to flip through it until I reach it. Uh, and the AGC is off. That's where we want it. So let's see if we can make a QSO here. Uh, let's get back to the computer. And apparently uh, I have some troubles with my uh, I have some troubles with my Linux uh, 73 Linux distro so uh, I moved on to my Windows computer here uh, so we can see that this works let's just make the window uh, be where it's gonna be so let's see if we can get some decodes here we can so that part is working let's now press the tune button and see if the radio PTTs It does. You see all the buttons turn red, so we're good there. So now it's uh, about time that we call some CQs and uh, see what happens. And I'm going to speed up this process so you don't know, wait for a QSO here. But uh, we're going to get uh, Colin here, and um, then we'll see what happens. And as you can see now, the radio transmits. And just so that is said, um, the settings on WSJT is... They're, they're the same in both Windows and Linux. So there's some other thing happening that won't make the uh, WSGT work in, um, in Linux for me. So I have to look that up. But um, besides that, we'll continue calling. And while we're calling here, uh, we can take a look at the PSK reported just to see that we're getting out. And we are. So let's get back to the computer here, though, and see. And we got a station coming back to us. So let's make sure that we're calling that. We actually got several stations. What do you look at that? We got a little bit of a pileup on 5 watt FD8 here. And after that is done, we're going to do the Portuguese station as well. So we have both stations in the log. And there's a good tip for you, though. Always finish a pileup if you can. There is a reason people are calling you. So let's see if we can get an answer back from the Portuguese station as well before we call it a night. And we've proven that this works. And it doesn't look like the uh, Portuguese station is coming back to us. So we'll do one more cycle. And if not, we'll call it a day. So if we now take a look at um, PSK Reporter here, you can see that all of those five watts and we'll actually update the page just to be sure. But those five watts of FD8 actually leads us into 
North America. So everywhere from the Middle East to North America, actually. And um, to be honest, I am impressed by 5 watts on this little Chinese radio. And I just want to say thank you for watching. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this little video and this little experiment here. Because this was an experiment just to see if I could make it work. And through a little bit of dodgy soldering, a bit of combining cables I had, I made it work. Uh, next step is to get that FTDI chip, uh, the USB FTDI uh, board from China and see if we can make an FTDI serial cable for it and do cat control. But that's not important though. The important thing is that we made it work with just stuff we had lying around. And uh, I mean, that is awesome. So thank you for watching. Thank you for enjoying this, hopefully. And um, you can do this yourself as way as well. This is why I'm doing this. I'm doing this to inspire you to do some of the same things and make stuff happening and combine things you have in different ways to make new things happen. You're watching LB0 Fox India Norwegian Adventures. I'm Morton LB0 Fox India. And if you watch this far, please click that thumbs up button. Consider leaving a comment down below. Subscribe if you're not subscribed and everything that that's that. And besides that, uh, I just made a video about um, how I'm going to be honest with sponsored content and that I'd much rather rely upon support from you fans than from sponsors. So if you're so inclined and you have the money for it, there are a couple of ways down below to put some money in my virtual tip jar. Anyway, see you guys later. That's it for now. 7-3.